Hello, imaginers. Hello, iris workers. Did I just make that up? Or did you did. Nice. <laughs> nice. I like it. Um, thank you for tuning in live. Please let me know that you can hear me, that you can hear Meredith, uh, that you can see us okay, that everything is good. Uh, my name is Scott Whitenkivowitz. I am the community manager here at Imagine. Uh, if we haven't met before, it's nice to meet you now. My goal is to help you get the most out of Imagine so you can spend less time worrying about the tedious post-production and focus more on what you love. Um, if you have any questions, demo requests for us during this live stream, please comment and ask. That's what this is all about. Um, if you're watching the replay, uh, if, you're, if a friend shared this with you, I'm glad you're here. I'm sorry you couldn't tune in live. You'll know you're watching the replay because it, say, it will say I was live instead of I am live. And if you are watching the replay, please comment with the word replay. I am happy to introduce you to Meredith Gradle, the CEO and founder of IrisWorks. Hi, Meredith. Um, can you <laughs> share a bit about yourself and what exactly IrisWorks is? Absolutely. Thank you for having me. We're excited to be here. Um, so I am the founder and CEO of IrisWorks, and we are a business management tool built specifically for photographers. Um, our primary goals are really to automate your business and do so in a simple and easy way. And so we launched in uh, 2015. So uh, we've been around for a while. We uh, have photographers who use our platform all over the world. And, um, and yeah, that, that's about, about it. We'll get into obviously a lot of the automation and, and yeah. what, what and how we do it, but, uh, yeah, excited to be here. Awesome. Yeah. So, um, automation is a funny thing that, um, is in our lives, whether people realize it or not. <laughs> and, uh, in our personal lives, in our business lives, and there are so many ways to incorporate automation, whether it's AI or just intelligent automation um, that can truly benefit everything we do with our photography businesses. Um, so for example, one thing you're gonna be sh you're gonna be showing is scheduling, right? This is something that an area where um, there's still photographers who are manually scheduling things when that could be fully automated and take all that back and forth off your plate. This is the same thing that that I do when I'm scheduling a podcast for Imagine is I'm I send off a scheduler and the guest chooses a day and time that works for them instead of going back and forth. Um, there's things like um, there's things that you could do in a photo studio like when presence is detected, turn on the lights, right? It's <laughs> automation, right? It's a simple thing that could either be using smart technology like a uh, I'm not going to say it because things will start going off in my house um, <laughs> or things like literally just a motion sensor, which is what I did in my laundry room. I don't want to have to carry in a laundry basket and then put it down just to flip the light on, let the light go on when it sees me holding a laundry basket. Right. So automation is everywhere. Um, and um, so before we dive into what's going on with automation and in Iris and um, share you know, and and and, and sh have you show everybody what uh, what is capable for uh, for automating their photography business um, in IrisWorks. I'm going to share a little bit about what Imagine does because Imagine is really an AI based post production tool. Um, but we recently have expanded our workspace, uh, what we call our workspace, to incorporate other aspects of of post-production beyond just culling and editing. And what's really cool, so for those who are unaware, anybody tuning in from the IrisWorks community, by the way, this is streaming to both the Imagine community and the IrisWorks community, which is an amazing thing. Um, technology is cool. <laughs> um, it, it's, it's uh, for those who are unaware, Imagine can um, cull your photos for you, select the best photos in your project for you, using AI and can also edit your photos for you either from learning how you edit from 3,000 or more previous edits, learn how you edit from a Lightroom preset combined with an onboarding survey to personalize that, and we call that a light personal AI profile. And then it also does a, you, um, we also have built in profiles called talent AI profiles where it's, we've learned from, from partners of ours to automatically edit like them for your photos. But, more recently, we introduced a new automa automation that's less AI and more just 
automation. And what that is, is backups. So I'm gonna bring up the app on screen real quick and show you what that looks like. So if I go to my account and I go to cloud settings, you'll see here that I have um, high resolution backups turned on and it is set to optimized photos. What this means is we are actually going to upload the high resolution photos and compress it um, enough to basically remove, out, remove the, the data that doesn't need to be there and convert it to a lossless DNG file. So that way it's still, if it's a 40 megapixel file, it's still 40, me 40 megapixel file, but it, the physical size of the file will be reduced from four, four to one. So you're talking, it could be a 10 megabyte raw file, full resolution still, just all the unnecessary data is removed. Um, so that is how I have it set to save space. The other option is original photos, which literally is your original um, file just uploaded to our cloud storage. And then of course we have low resolution backups as well. Um, and low resolution backups is free for everybody, which is, which is really cool. Now I say automation because we automate how the backup is done in your post-production workflow. You don't have to think about it. Once you have it set for either high resolution or optimized high res or original for high resolution or optimized for, for your high resolution, all you have to do is create a new project and you can choose if you're gonna call or edit. And let's say we're gonna call a project and I wanna back up everything in my client session. I would choose the catalog, I have it open. I have a specific one I wanna use. I'm gonna drop it in here and I'm gonna go and say, okay, here is the, um, the, the project. This is my latest client that I want to actually um, do the backup for. So I would go in and I would say, um, live demo, October 4th, 2023. I, I'm just gonna name it that. And what's cool is I can now go in and choose my calling preferences and hit upload. Now what's gonna happen here is the automation part. First, we're going to upload the low resolution files, which is for the culling and or the editing, depending on what you're doing. And you can see here cloud storage is next. So the moment that this 40th photo in this project is uploaded, which is now done, now the cloud storage is gonna start uploading the high resolution photos for that high resolution backup. Fully automated, you don't have to think about it. You don't have to back up every single photo that you, if you don't want to, it's up to you which photos you're, you're backing up because we are backing up whatever you call and or edit. Uh, and all done behind the scenes, you can go on your day and do something else, let that just keep uploading in the background. It's out of the way, it's automated, and it saves you um, that time of having to go back it up another place, but at the same time, um, frees you up that time in your, in your personal life, in your business life to do something else, to focus on something else, to, to, to you know, convert that next lead to a paying client for the next photo session, um, to do some additional marketing, or to just go sit on the couch and watch a movie. Whatever you want, you can do during that time. So that That's is awesome. our, yeah, it's, it's, really, oh. it's, it's really fun. <laughs> yeah, I love that it's something that you, can, you don't even have to think about because so many of us as business owners are, your mind is like in 70 different places at every, any given time. And this is yeah. so important <laughs> because yep. you, know, it, you have to have backups. Um, and so to not even have to really realize that you're doing it when, you're, when it's happening is like, a no brainer for me. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. And uh, just so you, everybody can see over here, you can see the cloud status. So you can see here, this one has high resolution backed up. This one has low resolution. I deleted the high res. Let me show you what that looks like. I can click on the cloud. I can download my high resolution backup or my low resolution. What another thing that we do as a value add is if you are backing up high resolution with Imagine, and you are editing with Imagine, then your edit data comes with your high, resolu your high resolution backup. So if I was to go from this cold project to an editing, then, and then I went to go download the, the, the backup to recover it, all those XMP files come with it that I could just drop back into Lightroom if I had to recover and not have to re-edit. It's all there already done. Um, but if I don't need that backup anymore, I can just go ahead and delete that high resolution backup and save that space on Imagine. Do it as I need, right? 
So it could be that you're us utilizing it in the long term. It could be that you you're utilizing it until you, until you deliver the, the, the project. And depending on your needs, you can use it how you want as well, which is, which is really cool. That's so um, fantastic. Yeah. Um, if anybody watching, there's a, there's a handful of you watching. If anybody who's watching has any questions about backups, please get them in the chat. In the meantime, um, Meredith, what do you have going on at Irisworks that can, um, you know, help automate people's lives? Yeah. So it's, we don't have enough time, I think, to talk about everything <laughs> I wish I could automate. But, uh, but I'm going to touch on, I really want to share a couple of highlights. You mentioned our online scheduling tool, which is huge. There's yeah. so many people who don't realize the benefits of online scheduling um, until they use it. And as soon as they get one person to book from it, they realize how much time it saved. Um, and what we've done in Iris is not only have, do we have our own scheduling tool, but it is can be essentially what kicks off the rest of your automation. Mm -hmm. um, so I kind of want to showcase a little bit of that today, but also then really highlight what is the kind of the backbone of Iris, which is our workflow kind of puts everything in motion for you. Um, and so I will love to share my screen and if you can, I think we're throwing up there. Okay, perfect. So um, we have su such a strong belief at Iris that your business can grow so much faster when you have automation in place, as well as like a professional uh, appearance to your business. And Iris does that for you in a couple of different ways. Um, so like I said, I'll touch on a couple of different things, but I want to start with um, our workflow engine. Um, and I'll kind of showcase a little bit of this here. This is one that's already been set up. When you sign up for Iris, you can do a couple of different things. You can create your own workflow from, straps, from scratch, or you can use one of our templates um, that we give for free. You can also, we have some from our partners that you're able to, um, to check out as well. Um, but essentially within here, what you can do is you can automate as much or as little of your process as you want. Um, we kind of bulk it into two different groups of uh, things that you need to do before a session and things that you need to do after a session to keep things simple. But what you can do in here is you can tell Iris to automatically send emails for you um, automatically send your invoices, contracts, questionnaires, all of that. Or you can say, hey, Iris, I want you to remind me when it's time for me to send this message to my client so that you have an opportunity to edit that message before it's sent. A lot of people want to personalize things, and we totally understand that. Um, but you don't want to forget to send those important messages. And so we allow you to um, to either have us do it automatically for you when you want us to do it, or just say, hey, Iris, remind me to do that. Um, and then you also have the ability to say, hey, you know, there's certain tasks where you need to, for example, up, you know, put your images into Imagine for calling and editing and backup. Uh, you can have Iris just remind you when it's a, a time for you to do that. So, um, so again, full flexibility, but you can also fully automate depending on, you know, what you like and, and your personal preferences. Um, I, love, I love that you have the, the, the ability to pause, let the photographer say, okay, now you can send the email because that, I know that is when, when people think about automation, that is a concern of, for example, um, a big one in the wedding space, right? Is a year after the wedding, you want to send a happy anniversary email, but what if they got divorced, yes. right? Unfortunately, so, that does happen, right? It yeah. does happen, right? So, so that is a really good thing that you could, and you, you're saying that you could, you could automate Basically, if you wanted to, you could automate everything up to that point and then say that one email, wait until I give the okay. Yes, exactly. That's... And what we'll even do is we queue that email up for you in Iris mm -hmm. and we say, hey, you know, Scott, it's time for you to send this. Do you want to make any edits? You go in, you know, make the edits or you say, whoops, no, that, yeah. that couple is, you know, gone their separate ways. So I don't want to go ahead and send that happy anniversary message. Right. It's great um, to get that in place. Yeah, that was actually, you know, we we heard loud and clear from our customers because we didn't always have that. They're like, uh, I, I'm, I like the idea, but there are certain things that I don't want to have to, um, yet, you know, you don't want Iris to automatically do. And we, we get that. It makes total sense. Um, now, there's different ways that you can kind of kick this off. The What we mentioned earlier is our online scheduling tool. And so we have the ability for you to... Um, obviously schedule online. This works really well for portrait sessions, um, engagement sessions, maybe and things, obviously not for a wedding, but um, you can have different offerings, different calendars based off of different session types, whatever you may want. 
And here, you know, you can go through your clients are, this is the client view. So they're able to see all of your availability. For example, this is a fall calendar. Um, you can kind of see up at the top, if you want to, you can even include your contract here as well as an invoice. So before anything can get booked on your calendar, those items, I have it set up here to require those. Um, you want to have, this is, this is like a best practice for me, is you do want these items before you allow someone to book time on your calendar. So when someone actually goes through this process, what happens is once they've paid that invoice and they get to the confirmation page, they are automatically added into your account, um, onto your calendar. And if you want to, again, I've done this, I have scheduled this. So as soon as somebody pays that invoice and that deposit, they're added to my calendar and my workflow gets initiated. So here you can see on my calendar, um, this is one that I you know, kind of booked prior to the call so you guys could see this, but here you can see what the, obviously what the event is, um, but you can see, hey, that, that email, that confirmation email that I had scheduled has already been sent. And then here's my upcoming emails when there's going to be sent um, and what is included in those. So again, you have the option to automate from online booking before your before your anyone gets on your calendar all the way through the end of the process, um, and we just find once somebody sees this and they give it a go, they realize how much time it saves them, mm -hmm. and they're not forgetting crucial steps along the way. Yeah. So can you um, share what calendar services that you integrate with? Uh, is it like Google yeah. Calendar and yep. others? Yeah, absolutely. So you're able to integrate with Google, Yahoo, A uh, not AOL, I almost said AOL, mm -hmm. um, your iCal yeah. and so mm -hmm. forth. And so when you do that, you have the option to um, a couple of things with it. If you want us to look at that calendar for availability in real time, we can. Or if it's something that's more just you wanted to see it visually in here, but not consider it for your online tool, you can do that as well. Okay. So again, we try to give you flexibility. Um, without that automation so that you don't lose a lot of people feel like they're going to lose control over things right. when they automate and that is we don't want that right, right. you want to still be in control to your business and yep. um and i'm sure you find this with with photographers we are all in the same business but we do things very differently oh yeah you know <laughs> you could be sitting next to five people and all of us would have a different yeah. process essentially yeah. so um so i think again it's super important that people realize there's flexibility in here and it doesn't all have to be one way or, or no, you know, all or nothing, so to speak. Yeah, totally. Totally. Yeah. I mean, we see that with, uh, with calling and editing all the time. That's why we've built our, our, our software to be so diverse in, in how it can handle you each photographer's individual workflows, right? Yeah. Everybody calls different. Everybody has their own rating system to, for what they want to edit. Um, some people use folders, some people use collections. I am a big collection and collection set person. <laughs> so it's, Same. you know, um, e you know, so everybody has their own unique situations, no matter what it is in their business. And it's, it is funny cause you can put 10 people in a room and everybody could have the same exact end goal, but most likely nine out of 10 will be individual. <laughs> exactly. And that, so. that is the challenge when you're building, a, you know, software like yeah. we have is that you want to make sure people understand and they have the control that they want yeah. at the same time, giving them the tools to make things simpler and easier on themselves. Right. And, yeah. um, and a lot of times what we find in Iris, especially is people could start by doing everything themselves until they realize, you know, and then bit by bit, they'll start adding in, you know, okay, I'm going to automate this, this part of my workflow. Mm -hmm. The rest of it, I'm going to keep as a reminder to myself, but I'm going to go ahead and edit, automate that one message. And then they realize, oh, I can be sitting on my couch or I can be on vacation. Mm -hmm. And I just got a booking <laughs> through my online calendar. And this is actually something I had wanted to share, which we think is super impressive. Mm -hmm. We looked at Iris Works photographers and for the first 12 months after they implemented online booking, actually started using it, their bookings went up by over 31% for the following year. Nice. So it was a huge, you know, huge win for our customers. And again, once people realize that automation isn't a bad thing, yeah, they they can very quickly adopt it and see that growth in their business much faster than if they 
you know, kind of kept doing things the way they were. Yeah, yeah. Um, on the same topic, this is this is interesting. So I did a poll yesterday in the uh, in the Imagic community. Um, I have it up on my other screen, so I'm, don't mind mm -hmm. me looking at the wrong direction. Um, so I did a poll of where do backups fit into your photography workflow. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is again on the on the topic of. Let me take. Uh, I'm gonna take you off um, yeah. your your screen off for a second. Um, so on the topic of everybody has their own workflows, right? Um, where do backups fit into your workflow? Where do backups fit into your workflow, Meredith? Right. So the second I import into Lightroom, I am backing up in uh, an, on an external hard drive mm -hmm. is like number one. Now I need to do imagines where I don't have to even <laughs> think about that because it is yeah. an extra and it's an extra step for me. Right. Yeah. And are you doing it before? So are you calling in Lightroom or are you calling before I'm you get call, to Lightroom? I'm calling in Lightroom. Okay. So you're 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 backing up um, basically before you call is mm -hmm. when you're backing up. Yeah. Okay. So in the poll, there was there was originally two options. I do it before calling and editing, or I do it after calling and editing. And I mm -hmm. got a lot of comments saying I do it both. And I'm like, okay, that's interesting that some people have like depending on what they're doing, they have different workflows, right? Which maybe if you're doing a wedding versus an engagement, maybe, yeah, you've got different workflows because that's fair. I don't know, right? Okay, 86% back up before calling and editing, 12% back up after calling and editing, and the people who commented with both, I added both to the poll and only 2% have, um, mm -hmm done that but like not a lot not enough people went back to to revote so um very interesting i mean it makes sense to me that that most of it happens before calling and editing because that's how i work uh -huh. um <laughs> but case in point everybody's got their own workflow <laughs> everybody does things differently and it's not that yeah. one way is better than the other again yeah. it's sometimes yeah. it's situational or personal preference often is what we see but um but I, uh, yeah, I think to be able to use Imagine to do all of that without me even yeah. thinking about it is huge. I mean, that's a yeah. huge, and again, actually, unfortunately, how many times have you heard where somebody didn't back up and it came back to like bite them later on? Yeah. Um, we've heard a lot of stories specifically, you know, with not using a contract or an invoice yeah. and, um, and having those stories unfortunately you hear yeah. about too often yep. and so it's one of those things where if you don't even have to remember to do it your cover it's like a cya i use that all the time and actually somebody told me they didn't somebody younger was like what does that mean um do you, you know what cya i, I recognize cover, it but i don't cover, know top cover of your uh, cover yes 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 <laughs> uh, so, you know, but it, it, it's, I'm just aging myself apparently. So it's it all is, good. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, it's just a way, if you don't have to remember to do these important business tasks mm -hmm. that really are for your own protection in the long run, backing up contracts yeah. and invoices and things like that, then you, again, you're, you're covering yourself for potential liability down the road. Yeah. Hopefully, you know, nine times out of 10, that's not going to occur anyway, but there is that you know, in business, you have to be aware of those things. And, um, and again, that's what we're trying to accomplish with, with Iris works and is really helping yeah. elevate people's business. And yeah. So, so you. those, so those watching right now, we're, I'm curious, um, put in the chat, have you ever had a, uh, an issue where, um, you've did not have a backup and that wound up biting you, or have you had an issue where you did not have a proper contract in place um, and that wound up biting you. Um, I'm curious. Just comment with with um, with backup or contract, depending on if you had either of those not in place and there was a disaster. Um, while we're waiting for hopefully people to comment, um, there was one comment um, that is I'm oh. looking for a profile with Jose Villa like outcome. Hope somebody um to do the profile uh so it's always a it's always a possibility if you like jose's work send him a message and send him our way um and we can always have a chat with him but uh yeah i mean anything anything is possible I, i'll i'll check out his work as well um afterwards and see 
if, uh, actually, I'm gonna do a quick search right now and see if it's obvious of what his work looks like, and then maybe we have a talent profile like it, or maybe we don't. So, Scott, a quick question yeah. for those sure. maybe who, from the IrisWorks community who aren't yeah. super familiar, how many talent profiles do you currently have with your partners? Mm -hmm. You know, is it, a, is it a small group? Is that something that you plan to grow? And can you kind of, I guess maybe can you quickly do a, like a explanation of the talent profiles and how somebody new to Imagine might take advantage of those? Sure, yeah, let me um, bring the app back up on the screen and you can see exactly where we oh, have. Nice. So we partnered with Photographers like Sarah Edmonds, John Branch IV, Susan Stripling, um, Lindsay Russo, Kevin Mullins, uh, Rocio Vega, um, Tracy and D from 37 Frames. Um, I mean, the list goes on. Michael Anthony's here, Charmy Pena's here, Fair, Fair Herbisti is here. Um, so there's a lot of photographers that we partnered with. And so these are all the profiles that are available, the ones you see in the app. We have discontinued some over the years. Um, so it used to be that you would turn them on or off depending on um, if you wanted to use it. Now it's basically, we've revamped it a little bit and now it's basically just go ahead and, and use it. Yeah. And if you are using it, it shows up in previously used. Um, but basically every single one here is a raw based edit. It will only edit raw files, except for two of them. Okay. Um, Rocio Vega shoots JPEG and we partner with her to create two JPEG profiles. We are looking for more photographers who shoot JPEGs. So we can partner with them and get some JP more JPEG profiles out there. Um, but everything else is um, everything else is raw. And inside the app, there's this compare styles button. And you can um, basically say, uh, I wanna compare, let's do, for fun, I'm gonna, actually, you know what? I'm gonna do only color ones. So. Here's the original photo. Here is one with Sarah Edmonds' profile, Love is Love and Light. Here is the same photo with John Branch IV's Natural Feels versus Susan Stripling's Clean and Crisp versus Michelle Harris's Lux Color versus Tracy and D's Modern Classic. So you can um, see them all. Let me, I can even make this bigger. Let's see if that helps. Okay, so um, I can switch the photos and see the difference between you know if landscape photographers want to use it versus portrait photographers versus real estate photographers and so on and so on, and really see the differences between each one cool. um, with the highlights, the shadows, the contrast, the, the grain. Because if I was to put in, for example, um, Tierra by Fer Haristi, and we go to, uh, let's see, this may not be a great example. Nope. Bears is very warm and very grainy versus the others, yeah. which are not grain. They don't use as much grain. So everything's different. Um, and with a talent AI profile, you can't, it doesn't learn from you over time, right? It's not personalized like our personal AI profiles are, which keep learning from you over time. Um, but what we do have in place, if I go back to the talent profiles, is I can say, I really like where is it? Here it is. I really like Fair's Tierra profile, but I'm not a fan of green, right? And this is actually mm -hmm. what um, um, uh, this is actually what um, Margot does. Uh, Margot is a uh, boudoir photographer, and she actually uses Tierra, but for her boudoir work. But she doesn't like green, so she actually takes away the green. And the way she does it is, we've got this feature. So once you're using the the um, the um, the talent AI profile, you can go and click and hit adjust talent AI profile. And then, and you can do this with any profile, even a personal AI profile, but you can dial in your settings for the profile, including the grain. And I can completely white out, white, wipe out the grain to zero, save the change. And now instantly without waiting, I've now sort of personalized this profile with basically overriding what Imagine does with what I set in this profile adjustment feature. Very um, cool. Yeah, so talent AI profiles are really fun because they're easy for anybody to get on board and try different looks. Um, and you can do this little bit of personalization, but it won't learn from you over time. It's just yeah. the ability to dial it in on that. You but know, then once you've it. dialed it in to your, you know, I'd start with a talent profile, dial it in, I can save that and then going yeah, so forward, it, it's, it's kind of mine 
uh, my yeah, once, talent profile that I can utilize. Exactly. So it's saved. So once I make any change and it save changes, now this profile has profile adjustments on it and it will stay that way until you reset it or make a change and then it'll change to whatever you did. It's very um, cool because you've also done what we've tried to do where you you automate with control. So you yes. al will allow the photographer to, you know, kind of hold the reins and uh, yeah. and make the changes that they want, but still allow them to, you know, get some freedom and some extra time back by these yeah. tools that you've created. It's very cool. Yeah. 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 Definitely. So it's it's so much fun. Um, yeah. I want to I want to bring your screen back up one, yeah. one more time. One thing I noticed, which I I I appreciate, especially as somebody who does um, proposal sessions and has to rely on um, sun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is exactly. excuse me is, is you, you added the the sunset stuff we and did. the sunrise stuff into yeah. there. And so we and even on our dashboard we kind of put the, the weather for the week, and right? Weather. Which is huge, you know, especially this time of year in a mm -hmm. good chunk of the country, um a lot of people are shooting outdoors. And so and it, you know, that golden hour is really when we all want to be outside, right? So yeah. We put the sunrise and sunset here. We do have a lot of people who do, you know, sunrise sessions. I never did them myself. Not much of a morning person, but um, to have the ability to say, okay, look, like, like, let me check that date. And I can even go to a future date and say, oh, okay, 651 now is when the sun is setting here. I need to make sure that I don't schedule my sessions past, you know, X amount of X time. So um that was something again you know our our awesome user base was like hey you know it would be great instead of me having to go to some other you know to a weather app if i could just see that right here i could plan in advance you know when am i going to start and end my my mini sessions or whatever it may be um and so we added that in here and it, it seemingly you know simple thing ended up being one of our most loved yeah. aspects of the calendar and uh and uh, people do rely on that and, and love the ability to see in advance, you know, okay, here's what I need to be planning for when you're, when you're scheduling or when you're, you know, putting out your availability for your online calendars. So. Yeah. It's quite yeah. often those little things that, that go over the best. Yeah. Well, and the, it's so important, you know, we love to hear from our users because, you know, we're built, we've been building for years and years and we know it very well, but, Again, because so many people do things a little bit differently and uniquely, when we hear ideas and suggestions, we're like, oh, you know what? That's a really good idea. Let's let's talk about that and see if we could yeah. make that happen. Or um, especially when we hear from, you know, a good chunk of our users, we know that this is something that's probably widely used, not only amongst our user base, but amongst the industry. And so um, Iris has been a pretty... Um, you know, the product development has really been driven by a lot of our customers over the years, yeah. which is, you know, which is great because yeah. we want to build what, what's needed. Um, yeah, 100%. Great. That's the same, same thing with Imagine. Everything we do is is driven by the by the by what the community asks for. Um, yeah. And it's, it's, uh, it's funny because when somebody says an idea, right, and you're like adding to the list of, okay, you know, 10 people have asked for this, you know, maybe it's now time to start looking into it or whatever the number is, you know, mm -hmm. um, to me, the fun part is not only is, the, is it the the feature, the idea, but it's okay. How do I make that work in the in the ecosystem that we built, right? Yeah. Where again, it's flexible enough um, to work for anybody's workflow um, is not um, potentially a damaging thing if somebody doesn't want it, and so on, right? So, right. Um, yeah, you really, don't. Yeah, yeah. you want to make sure that you're not forcing someone's hand on something and you're still get, allowing that flexibility. And one of the things that we always take into account as well is how do we keep it simple? Because, you know, photographers, we have so many different things that we have to focus on. Right. And a lot of times this isn't necessarily one of them that mm -hmm. tends to kind of go to the wayside, the business aspects and the management of, of your clients. And so we want to make sure that we keep it simple for people. So it doesn't become another you know, a burden on them. And we can, you know, so when we hear about, hey, this would be a great, you know, addition to the platform, we're like, yeah, that, that sounds great. How can we do that in a way that's not going to complicate it and not going to stress people out, so to speak? Um, 
because software, you know, I mean, it can be intimidating. Um, and we, but we do like to, um, you know, emphasize that simplicity and the ease of setting up Iris can be done in, you know, less than a couple hours versus, mm. you know, that you can get into some platforms that'll take you weeks to get right. configured. Es um, especially with a platform like what you've built is it's, while you created flexibility, like CRM type tools in general are complex beasts. Yeah. <laughs> so it's intimidating no matter how experienced you are or not. Like setting one of those up um, is complicated. I feel like time consuming wise, whatever. So anything that you can do as as the as the the CRM software, right? Yeah. To simplify that for people is, is a huge huge win. Yeah. On all around, of course, right? Like so. It. And you're um, still right. It is, you know, sometimes I look back at when we first launched to where we are now and we, we are, it's an extremely powerful system. Again, you could pretty much automate everything if you want. What I try to tell people is, uh, you know, get in here, start with, we have a task list when you first sign up, right? Hey, this is what we, what you want to do first to get yourself going and just focus on those, you know, one thing at a time. And people always get hung up on a workflow. Well, well how, I don't know what is my workflow. And I say, okay, time out. Start with a piece of paper. Yeah. And just write right. down okay, what happens when yeah. somebody books with me. What happens? What do, or what do I want to have happen? Yeah. And just or post it notes. Out. Post it notes are good yeah. for that too. Yeah, and just list it out. And then you know, yeah, post it notes. You could move the order around. And once you have that, then you can start plugging it into the system. Um, yeah. And then many years ago, what we did was we said, okay, let's remove a hurdle for some of these people who maybe haven't ever started a workflow or never thought about it. Let's give it to it, give it to mm -hmm. you. So if you're just getting started and you don't know where to begin, we've got yeah. workflows for all different types of, of genres of photography, yeah. um, in, which include all of the emails, questionnaires. Um, some of them even have uh, like a contract template that you can start with and, you know, utilize with, uh, we always recommend you, you contact your lawyer and your state and make sure it works for where you currently are located. But, um, you know, sometimes people just need that, that starting point to get them, get, get, get them going. And so we actually pre-populate your account with those. Um, and again, use them, delete them, modify them, whatever you want. But um, oftentimes we find people say, okay, this is a great place to start. Now I'm going to yeah. make it my own. Cool. Yeah. Um, I have two, but well, I'm going to bring this uh, QR code up on screen. So anybody who's interested in trying, um, Iris works, you can scan that and sign up for a free trial. Mm -hmm. Um, while this is up, we'll leave this up for a little bit. Um, two questions. One, do you offer migration services? So for anybody who's in a, in a yeah. different platform that they want, you know, if, they, they sign up, they, they, they like the trial, they want to migrate. Do you offer a migration service? We do, and it's 100% free. So wow, um, nice. we have found uh, a lot of times people are looking for a different system, but they're, they're like, I don't want to go through this again. We will yeah. migrate for you, um, and we don't charge you for it. So uh, you sign up for an account, and we will take care of that for you. Um, and that's, uh, like, that's a big one because as we mm -hmm. just discussed, like it's a hassle to set to in many cases to set up it from is. scratch, right? So it <laughs> <is>. <laughs> yes. and even it's just time consuming from, from that yes. to just move things over from one place to another. And yeah. so, yes, we do that. Um, and then, you know, that, that scanner, uh, not scanner, that QR code right there, uh, scan that, and that'll take you to our website where you can, of course, kind of peruse everything, but we do offer a, a two week free trial, um, so that you get an opportunity to check things out before you commit. Before we started recording, you and I were talking about Sam Hurd. Um, yeah. And when I was at in his um, attending and helping at his workshop uh, at this point a month ago, a little over, almost two months ago, I don't even know. Um, uh, one of the things that he when he when he got to his CRM point of his workshop, and he even brought up what we just talked about the complexity, right? But the one thing he emphasized is how much time saving he's gained. Once he went through the setup process and got it all done, yeah. From there on, it was it was easy flowing, right? At, at that point, you know the 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 mental internal mental pain of setting up a CRM was gone because now everything else was fully automated or semi-automated, automated, depending yeah. on what 
what he needed, right? So it's um, great. We often yeah. hear people say, I couldn't run my business without, without it. <laughs> and that is the biggest, you know, that's the biggest win for us yeah. um, because yeah. that's what we want to do. We want to run your, help you run your business and be a part of that growth and, and improvement and, um, you know, things like that. Awesome. So, um, my second question to you, uh, is, um, before I blank out, oh, is there any upcoming feature that you want to share about if you're able to, if not, that's fine. Oh, I'm not sure my team will like me doing anything. Um, I'm not going to give specifics, but we do sure. have two larger features that are um, new to the platform that we are uh, beginning work on actually this week. Mm -hmm. um, and so I can't share details, but um, I will say that it goes along with continuing to automate um, and streamline all of your business operations. So think about uh, getting rid of extra tools that you might have outside of oh, nice. uh, your business and, you know, trying to bring things okay. all under one roof. So yeah. One I of wish my biggest, yeah. Yeah. One of my biggest, um, just like, just, just cause as a more technical person, one of my biggest complaints about, um, a lot of software is that for me to connect from A, from X to Z, I have to use Zapier. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't want to use that. Just give me direct integration. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like... well, you, just by saying that word, I know that you're a little bit more technical because a lot of yes. people are like, what is that? And yeah. you know, we use it internally at Iris right. because we have to, you know, there's a lot of yeah. things we have to connect. And, uh, um, but we have found that the segment of photographers who know what that is or, um, you know, know how to utilize it is very small. And they know, like, they, they want all of these connections, but they don't want to have to go through, you know, a bunch of hoops just to get it to work. And and Zapier, you sometimes, it's another thing you have to jump through a hoop to get what you want. So, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, boy. It's, it's, so I, I can't wait to, to learn more about what you just teased because that, that's exciting. Um, so on, on the Imagine End, um, up on right on the screen right now is a QR code. You can get 1,000 free edits from from uh, scanning that QR code. And yeah, please do that. Awesome. I um I also want to share two things. Um, two more things. One is, um, one feature we have coming out that is um, nearly ready, and we will should have it out for at least beta soon. Is skin uh, smooth skin. So right now we have subject mask already in Imagine where you can mask. We, I just hit my microphone. We can mask your subjects and apply an edit separate, you know, from everything, uh, the rest of the image. Um, and we have subject mask settings, so you can even dial in sort of similar to the profile adjustments. You can dial in what edits you want done to that subject. Smooth skin will be an added thing on top of that where you can say, okay, now just smooth out the skin and you'll have different la uh, layers of how how intense do you want that smooth smoothness mm -hmm. to be. So that is... Um, that is in the works. We're very excited about that. That's and cool. Yeah. The other thing I want to mention is coming up next week. So we are recording this on uh, or live streaming on October 4th. So if you're watching the replay, it might be too late for this one. But coming up, we are having an Imaginers meet. So you can come hang out virtually with me uh, on October 11th at 1 p.m. Eastern time. Just scan that QR code and you'll be able to sign up for that. Um, it's 25 seats available to do that, it's like an hour conversation, very intimate, where we just get together a bunch of different imaginers and um, do a little round table of, you know, get to know each other and then talk shop. Uh, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit about imagine. I'll be able to answer questions one on one uh, with the group, <laughs> one on 25. And, um, and then if, you know, just if networking opportunities in here and stuff like that, it's just a fun like meetup, but virtually. So please, uh, please attend if you are interested. Um, and that's all I have. Very cool. Um, yeah. So with that, um, any, any final, any final words? It doesn't, we didn't get much, much, much in as far as comments, which is fine, but, yeah. um, I hope everybody who is watching, uh, you know, learned a little bit about automation where they can fit, uh, the, you know, imagine into your, into your business where you can fit Iris works into your business, um, and automate all those things that, so that you don't have to worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> 
and don't be afraid of it. I think that's the that's yeah. the message is, you know, you, both tools allow you to automate with control. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you don't have to be afraid of, of you know, handing the reins over to, to a software program. You can still have some control over it. And it's a great thing. Once you it get is. it going, you'll never go back. So, yeah. 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 Awesome. And as soon as we're done, I'm going to hit a button and my lights are going to go back to normal because it's automated. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. M- next step is for me to integrate it with Restream so that when I hit go live, my lights. There you go. That would be cool. Yeah. That would be cool. Um, yeah. Um, thank you, Meredith, for, for, you know, for the chat today, for sharing what, what Irisworks is capable of, um, um, for allowing me to share what Imagine is capable of and, you know, yeah, this is this has been fun. Yeah, appreciate it. Thank you. Awesome. And with that, I'm going to hit end. <laughs>